today on Nerd Out, Cogmios. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about Cogmios. So let's get into it. First, we need to talk about Ogmios if we're going to talk about Cogmios. So Ogmios is a tool written by Matthias Bincourt, also known as Ktor Z on Twitter. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to ogmios.dev. That's kind of the developer website. It is a bridge between something that is complex, the Unix socket mini protocols of Cardano node, and something simpler, JSON WSP WebSockets. So Ogmios is written in Haskell, so it has full access to all of the Cardano API and SDK for communicating with Cardano node. Um, it knows how to look at those mini protocols and pull objects off of, off of those um, messages. And then JSON WSP WebSockets is accessible by many different languages. So it's kind of take it going from something complex to something that's a little bit simpler and easier to use in, in other languages. So now what is Cogmios? Cogmios is a bridge between something complex, JSON WSP WebSockets, and something simpler, Kotlin function calls and objects. So we're going one layer of even more simplicity. So Cogmios, what it does is it connects to various Ogmios instances and allows you to access the node, the queries, sync blocks, et cetera, in a very simple and remote way. So same with Ogmios, it allows you to talk to the node remotely over the network and still access all those low-level things like you can through the Unix socket, uh, but it allows you to do it in a, in a remote way and a simple way. Uh, Kotlin is also a very accessible language to developers, and it's now the primary language of anybody who's an Android developer. So there's a big pool of developers out there that know Kotlin. So why Kotlin? Um, number one is the Noom team that I work on has a ton of developers. Uh, most of them have some Android experience. So they've been working with Kotlin for quite a while. So it's a very familiar uh, language for them. Kotlin has a feature called coroutines. This may be similar to what you've used to if you've done Go, called Go routines. It allows you to write asynchronous code that looks synchronous and has a very imperative style. So it's very easy to create the code and read the code, even though it's asynchronous code. So fire off a call, like on the network, wait for it to come back later. We'll, we'll take a look at this in a bit. Um, also, Atala Prism is written in Kotlin if you're familiar with PRISM. So that's another reason it's already kind of established in the Cardano ecosystem as, as one of the languages that will be around. If we look at um, the Stack Overflow list of most loved languages, we've got Rust here, here kind of at the top, TypeScript, Py Python, and then right here in number four is sitting Kotlin. If you look to where Haskell is, it's kind of way down here. So kind of middle of the pack, but but definitely not near the top. So here's an example of using Cogmios, looking at some Kotlin code. So there's different types of clients you can create. Um, I've separated them out into four different logical clients. They're actually all one client under the covers. Um, I have, the first one is a state query client. This is where you're gonna ask the node about the current state of the node, the network, parameters, stuff like that. So here's an example of a query uh, where we're doing, asking it what the chain tip, the chip, the tip of its blockchain is for the node. So you create the client, and then we use this nice um, Kotlin function called use. Use is, um, is similar to other Kotlin functions, like if you used to let or apply, or run, um, use is one that is used on things that are closable. They implement the closable interface, so that way you don't have to clean them up. If you're used to Java, this would be the equivalent of try with resources. Um, so you can kind of say use, and then you know at the very end that this connection will get shut down and cleaned up and disconnected gracefully. So the first thing we do here is we connect to the client and we're just making sure that everything went well 
with the connection. And then uh, we call the query here, and that is querying the chain tip. And the result of that is the message query response, and that contains the result, which is a query point result, and then I'm doing a conversion here to a, a point detail, which is what I would use in for storing in a database, something like that. Um, and then we can you know, maybe do an acquire of the point if you want to later. Um, if you want to do queries later on that are going to use this particular point, we'll explain this in a, in a bit. But this is just a simple example. There's a lot of different queries you can do. And normally this is, this code you're looking at is more for a unit test where you're, you know, you're going to open and close the client all, all the time. Um, normally you just keep the client open run all your queries and then close it at the very end. But these are simple examples. Now you see these little arrows over here. This is um, just some decoration in my, my editor that tells me when it's doing a coroutine call where it could potentially suspend. So that means it's actually making a network call. And what that does with coroutines is it is allows your processor to keep working on other things. Like normally with blocking sockets, um, you would block a thread and it would sit there and wait for the network connection to come back. Or you'd have to write a whole bunch of um, crazy asynchronous code, you know, with callbacks or you'd have nested callbacks all the way down of, you know, do this. Once it comes back, then you do this other thing and then you do this other thing. And it's, it's a whole bunch of boilerplate. Well, with Kotlin, Kotlin coroutines, it allows you to just decorate things um, and run it in an imperative style. So you just say, hey, connect. And whenever that comes back, the thread will resume and I'll get the connect result. And same with chain tip. You know, this may take a second or two to get the tip, but then it comes back and finishes running my code. All the while, the processor is allowed to go off and do other things. So that's the joy of Kotlin coroutine. So here's all the available queries we currently have in Cogmios. So there's acquire and release, and this is where you acquire a particular point on the chain. Usually you don't want to acquire it too far back, otherwise it won't work. The node only keeps track of um, so far away from the tip. But you would do an acquire and a release if you wanted to do a whole bunch of queries and you knew that they were all looking at the same kind of snapshot view of the blockchain. Like you don't want it to move forward while you do, do queries for things to change. You would say, oh, I want to acquire a point right now and then I want to do, you know, a bunch of queries at this, this given level. Um, make sure nothing changes while you're doing that. So most of the time you, you always care about the tip, so you don't have to call acquire and release. You can just hit these methods directly, and by default they'll always acquire and release the tip. So chain tip is the command we, we showed. We have pool parameters, block height, current protocol parameters. I'm not going to read all of these, but um, basically everything that is available in Ogmios is now simplified and available in Cogmios as well. Um, let's take a look at the next one. So this is the transaction submit client, and we're going to take a look at the evaluate transaction. So there's only two calls with this. There is um, submit and evaluate. We're going to take a look at evaluate. Evaluate is what you use if the transaction is a smart contract transaction and you want to make sure A, that it's going to run successfully, it's not going to fail, and B, you want to calculate your memory and step costs for that smart contract. So you can submit the, the bytes um, and it will evaluate the response and give you the memory and step values for each contract in that uh, transaction that you've got. So again, this is pretty simple. Connect is a coroutine call. Evaluate is a coroutine call as well. And then you get a response back that that's going to be like steps and, and memory for as an array of each contract in that transaction. So we've talked about those. Submitting is actually submitting it to the blockchain and it'll get processed then. So it goes into the mempool at that point. Uh, so looking at the mempool, we've got the transaction monitor client. This is the, the client that allows you to kind of look inside the mempool. This is one of the more newer things inside Ogmios. 
so you can connect and you can there's always an await acquire mempool so you're gonna you're gonna wait until you have a snapshot of the mempool and then you're gonna run all of your commands against that snapshot and when you're done with it you can release that mempool um, unlike the query one this doesn't always um, you always require that you have to grab a snapshot of the mempool so in this case I am just walking through the uh, the mempool one transaction after another just looping through them all and seeing all the details all the guts of everything that's in the mempool there's a, some simpler calls you can make. Um, so there's acquire, release. Simpler calls are has transaction. You just send in a transaction ID and it'll tell you yes or no whether that's in the mempool or not. Um, that's, that comes back as a quick true false. There's also size and capacity. So that tells you how many transactions are currently in the mempool. And it tells you the capacity of the mempool in, in bytes as well. So if that mempool is configured differently than a, a normal mempool, like if you wanted it bigger or smaller, um, that would come back as the capacity. And then that next transaction, that just allows you to walk that whole mempool in a loop right after you acquire it. Uh, the final one is, um, is the chain sync client. So this one takes a little bit more exhaustive example. Um, so in this case, I'm doing a few things with a state query client here just very quickly to connect and get some network info, um, you know. And then we also have this loop here. So we're going to loop on this. So if it ever disconnects, chain sync is a very long operation. At some point, we might lose our network. And so, you know, if we have an error, We'll capture that error, wait 10 seconds, and delay a little bit, and we'll try it all again just to retry the sync. So local chain sync client, we're calling a couple internal methods. Um, this is not Cognios methods. This is just my own methods. We're calling connect, and then we're calling sync the blockchain. So connect, all it's doing is what all the other clients do, connect, and then I'm throwing exceptions if there's any issues with it. Um, so this is actual code. This is not test code. And then we call sync blockchain. Sync blockchain first calls find blockchain intersect. So the first thing I do is I'm looking at my database, which is the chain repository, and I'm calling find intersect pairs. I'm not going to show you this method, but just know that it looks at the, the chain that I've saved to the database and it, it goes back um, with like exponentially. So it'll, it'll grab whatever I have as the tip of the blockchain. It'll grab that point. It'll go back. Um, it'll go, actually, it's not exponentially. It goes back Fibonacci. So it'll go, go back to two. It'll go back five, whatever, um, and grab those points. And then it'll pass those in. And we're also adding in at the very end of those points, we're adding in the start of Shelly for this network. So this is just a hard-coded config value we have. And what that does, find intersect says, okay, I have here's the points that I have, remote Ogmios node. What are the points that you have? In order, if you find any of these points, that's where I want to start syncing from. So that's the intersect between what I have and what the remote node has. And so if it is not an intersection found, then I throw up an error. Um, and then the next method we call is request blocks. So once we've found an intersect, we start requesting blocks. Let's take a look at that method. And so that is another while loop, so infinite while loop. And the, main, the only method we call here on the client is request next. And that's going to give me back one of two messages. It's going to be a roll backward message. And that's usually the very first message we receive when we're syncing. So that just gets me to where I start syncing. And then it's going to start sending me roll forward messages. So roll forward means here I'm giving you the next block, next block, next block. And then we can look inside that block, figure out what the tip is, um, compare that to what the block height is of what the block we've been sent. 
and then we can process the block and all, I'm not going to show you that method all I'm doing is kind of saving it in the database in a way that is queryable for what I want um, you know you can do whatever you want with that you could ignore half the stuff you could only save it off if it contains transactions or addresses you care about it's really up to you what you do with the, with the information and then we have some logging here just to show what percentage we're at in the sink and to put it all in context um, Cogmios is usually used as just a library as part of a bigger project so the project you just saw is part of Noom Chain that is syncing all the blocks and storing kind of the, the chain state in a, in a database but under the covers it's using Ogmios or Cogmios uses Ogmios and then that is what talks to the blockchain um, but you know as I've I've said before there's a whole lot of code in Cardano that is off chain and this is this is one of those big areas so your on chain code is probably about five percent you know the little smart contracts and stuff down here that you're going to be running as part of the the system um, there's like four smart contracts for Noom and they would all be accessed and run through Cogmios, Ogmios and then onto the blockchain but there's a whole lot of developers we have that are working on Noom Chain, Noom Server, the Marketplace, the Artist Portal, and the iOS and Android apps. Um, so whenever you're building a DApp or DeFi or any, any type of project on Cardano, just know that there's a whole lot of room for people who are not necessarily Haskell devs, but still want to get into blockchain development. There's, there's a ton of things you can do. And in this case, we have people that don't need to touch Haskell. They can just work in this whole world all up here, and um, they're happy and happy working there. Uh, that's all I've got today. Um, Cogmios is very close to a 1.0 release. There's just a little bit of testing yet to go, and then it'll be a 1.0 release. It's going to be put up on Maven Central, so you can... Just add it to your Gradle build file on your Kotlin project, and you'll be good to go. Um, I also want to give a shout out to um, Demeter.run. Um, Demeter.run is a way to get quickly get set up with a node. It gets you set up with a an instance of Ogmios. I use it for all the unit testing that the pre-merge unit testing for pull request on the Cogmios library. So it can test all of this kind of against a live pre-prod environment to make sure I haven't made any mistakes in, in Cogmios before it gets merged into the master branch. Um, so check out Santiago's project, Demeter.run. Um, and again, that's all I've got. So with that, nerd out.